As Deep Concrete 5 was released recently with new features such as the seismic design of shear walls, today a new feature has been implemented to design beams for torsion. But how do you actually enter the information in the program? How do you check the results? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss an overview of the user interface and the steps required to design concrete beams for torsion using as deep concrete. Let's get started. To illustrate this new feature in as deep concrete, I have prepared an example for the beam module. This is a spandrel beam. The torsion is mostly applied to this type of beams because it's eccentric. The beam is 24 inches deep and 16 inches wide. Also, a portion of the concrete slab is applied to the beam to calculate the torsional properties. This is a continuous beam uh, with four supports, so we have a three spans, 12, 15, and 14 feet, respectively. And at the right, we can see the Araglan tab that shows a summary of the results. Of course, here there are a couple of things that are failing because we haven't designed the beam yet. We are just starting to enter the input information now. We go to the materials tab. Here we can select the stress strain relationship for concrete and for the reinforcing steel. In this case, it's Hognestad and it's elastoplastic for steel. The concrete strength is 4 KSI. If we go to the loads tab, here we can specify either a pre combined factor loads or a nominal set of load cases and let us combine them internally. That's what we selected in this example. So we have the load cases for dead, life, roof life, snow, wind, and seismic. In this case, I have entered just dead and life for simplicity. And the type of loads are uniform, variable, concentrated loads, or moment loads. In the implementation of this new feature, we have added this checkbox where you can specify if the torsion can be reduced. If the torsional moments can be redistributed, then the torsion can be reduced accordingly. Also, all these checkboxes for torsion are new. Here you specify if the load is eccentric and therefore generates a torsion. The eccentricity here is specified as 12 inches. And in this case, this load W1 is eccentric, so it generates a torsion. If we go to the concentrated loads, here there are also some loads, dead and live, but in this case only the dead load, P1, is eccentric and generates a torsion. The live load, P2, is not eccentric, so doesn't generate a torsion. So with this user interface implementation, we can specify which load is eccentric and therefore it generates torsional loads. If we move to the reinforcement tab, here we can specify the reinforcing steel for the top bars, for the bottom bars, for the side bars, and also for the stirrups. Of course, we can use all these input fields to change the number of stirrups and the number of rebars and sizes and so on. But also there's another method to do it quickly, which is the design manager. By using the design manager, we click here in this button here we specify the type of rebar that we prefer to use in the design. And when we click the design button, then the program will design the reinforcement for you. This is intended to help the designer with a fair trial of the optimum set of rebars. Then you can go to the reinforcement tab and adjust the number of rebars and sizes as you see fit. The structural design is a science, but it's also an art. Therefore, the preferences and experience of the designer play an important role in the design. So in this example, let's design the reinforcing steel using the design manager. But in this case, we're going to use rebars number seven. And now the stirrups are number three. Let's click on design button. And the program has designed the reinforcement for you. Here in at a glance, we can see a summary of the results. Everything is passing now. If we go to the Condense tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations grouped by topic and by load combination. This is a section assigned to the torsional moments per load combination. And here are the results of the torsion strength. Everything is passing in every load combination. Let's go to the Detail tab. 
We can see here an even more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas and references to the ACI code. This is the shear design section. Scroll down. This is the torsion design section. This is new in this new version. See, this is a calculation of the torsional threshold. If the torsional moment is less than this number, then the torsion can be neglected. In this case, the maximum torsional moment is 54 keep feet, which is more than the threshold of 7.9, so the torsional effects must be considered. We specify that the torsion can be reduced, so let's use for design the cracking torsional moment, 31.6. Here is a calculation of the required transverse reinforcement, AT over S, and then the calculation of the total transverse reinforcement, considering the shear uh, stirrups and also the torsional stirrups. This is the checking of the maximum spacing and then the minimum uh, longitudinal steel for torsion. At the end, the checking of the torsional moments in combination with the bending moments and the shear forces, all the checks are, are passing. Let's go to the graph tab. It's a graphical view of the beam elevation with the applied loads, some uniform loads, some concentrated loads, dead and live. The load combination here is 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. This is the shear diagram and the moment diagram. The program has a feature that shows graphically the shear strength. We use check this box. This is the shear strength over imposed to the shear diagrams. So you can see that the red areas are completely inside the blue area. Likewise, in the moment diagram, we check this box. And this is the bending capacity of the beam. All the red areas are inside the blue areas. As you can see with this new feature, it's very simple to design a beam for torsional effects. The user interface takes into account the loads that generates torsional moments. And then the design manager completes the design of the beam considering the torsional effects. If you like the software, please download the free 15-day trial visiting the website www.asdipsoft.com. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.